You're listening to Inside Real Estate, your source for all things mortgage and real estate related. The show that brings you all the hottest topics and insights directly from those who know it most. Now sit back and enjoy the show. We know it most. We like to think so. (laughs) What's up, everyone? Paul Pasolak is here, Salvatore Cusmano, Brad Weisgerber. We are Inside Real Estate. Please go to our website at irepodcast.com. Go to your podcast app, share, subscribe. Please leave us a review. It helps us out Get to get real good content out to you guys. That's the particulars. Today, we have some special guests. We've got Ryan Kelly and Nick Pinozzi. I said that right, right? Yeah. Yeah, right, you good. That, yeah. Uh, they are from Remax Eclipse. They also uh, own Model Mortgage, which will be interesting because we've never had another other mortgage guys in here. So Ooh. you really kind of uh, a little Mexican <laughs> Look at the West Side off. Story, man. Right. <laughs> uh, Bill Gardner, uh, he was invited. Uh, he did not show up. I just want to let everybody He's know sleeping. that he mm-hmm. was invited, and he chose not to be on our show. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah. Active choice. Yeah, Bill. Uh, today, I, I want to talk about some things. I, obviously, I want to talk about your business. I want to talk about how how you guys got into it and get get your background so the audience understands everything about you. <clears throat> I do want to talk about the market and kind of what we're seeing as far as you know things changing. I mean, there's a lot of change in, in our world right now, <laughs> and, and real estate in general. So I want to talk about that. Uh, we'll talk about jobs. So I want, uh, GM's closing a bunch of plants. I kind of thinking about like how, what does that mean to the market, and then we're going to ask you guys three questions. Personal cool. weird questions. We're ready, man. All right. Weird. So, guys, you know, I don't know who wants to start, but give us some background. I mean, you guys are. Let me just frame this for everybody. Uh, these guys uh, run uh, a Remax Eclipse. You guys have done really well, super successful. You guys have a great book of business, great reputation. Really, that's that's the bottom line. You guys Thank do you. good work. Thank you. You guys make really uh, interesting videos, like coming out of like Bugattis, and like you guys are always <laughs> buttoning your shirts. But they're it's, always you gotta, have fun. you gotta have fun, man. You gotta at least button yeah. your jacket once. Yeah, it's, it's like all rented. Yeah. I want I want like a clip of you guys like all the time you button your jacket. So really good stuff. And obviously from the outside looking in, you guys have really utilized social media mm-hmm. to kind of build a brand, and your brand is is good. And and I think once you know uh, more though more so than anything, you guys back it up by being really good dudes once once you meet each Thank other. You. So. Give us some background. How did you guys get into uh, the real estate industry? Because I know you guys, you, you have a military background. I don't know, yeah, Nick, what yeah. you, you, no, you, we you both, both both did, right? Yeah, we yep. both do. And uh, we went in six months. Uh, you went in, I went in six months after you, didn't I? Yeah, six months after you. So back in 2007, I joined the military. Did that whole spiel. Was, uh, was it, what the technical term is a corpsman. I was a medic. Um, I worked in Bethesda National Naval Medical Center for a couple of years, and then I went what we call as green side. So I was a medic for the Marine Corps for the rest of my time. Wow. In Did service. you get deployed anywhere? Yeah, went to uh, Afghanistan. I was in Kajaki, Afghanistan, um, and so Sangin, <laughs> Afghanistan, which was uh, 2000. Was that wild, by the way? I, I uh, mean, it's a little off topic, but no, no, it was fine. It's fine. It's, it's fine. The, uh, it's normal. Yeah, it's normal. Uh, it was a little <laughs> off when he <laughs> yeah, got back. Went to well, when I got back, it was a little <laughs> totally off. Totally normal. But, yeah, no, I mean, it was. It, it is what it is. It's like a third world country. It's yeah. It's it was definitely uh, surreal. Real estate industry is not great there, huh? No, <laughs> no, it's all it, they literally make huts out of feces and yeah. urine and hay, and that's their homes. Yeah. No so mortgages on that. Yeah, no mortgages on that. <laughs> uh, so when, when I got back after all that fun stuff, uh, I went to Wayne State University. He said feces, oh. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta make sure I'm man. correct. Be proper man, I gotta here. be proper yeah. here. So yeah. uh, I went to Wayne State. I wanted to get into PA school or, or at least try to get into medical school. I, I was on a fast track program. I was getting ready to graduate within three years. I uh, got out, just banged out college. I just yeah. wanted to be done with it. Yeah. And then uh, <clears throat> my uh, parents were uh, talking about selling their home at one point and I was kind of light bulb went off. I'm like, oh it's real estate. I see it on TV, these guys make tons of money. It's gonna be easy. It's gonna be easy. Million dollar <laughs> listing, bro. Yeah. So it's a, the whole, you know, the cliche story and I got my <laughs> license and they didn't sell. And I was like, okay, this is fun. <laughs> now what? <laughs> now what? So <laughs> I look back, it's funny because I sent in a resume to a broker and you know most brokers will take on anybody within right. reason, right? So it's looking back it's kind of funny. Um, you felt special. Yeah, I felt yeah. special, right? So uh, Levin Wood, who was uh, who I ended up, who's also gr- with. who's a really yeah, good in the business. He's, he's got a great name in the business too. Under, yeah, he took both of us and myself starting off under his yep. wing, and um, we. So I went from there, uh, and then I think Nick was going to Oakland University, and I was bugging him every day, like do this, out, man. bro. Yeah, let's do this. Yeah, man. I was at the time I was uh, going to school for. So after my military career, I went to school right away for uh, computer engineering. Ah. Right up your alley. Yeah. Nerd. Super nerd. Nerd alert. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I was uh, working as a quality engineer for my stepfather and, uh, you know, just doing the salary thing, safe, all yeah. that good stuff. And he kept bugging me every day to get my license. And I was, I didn't, I didn't want anything to do with the commission. You know, I thought it was crazy, but he that's was scary. But however, I was miserable. He wasn't. <laughs> so that's what I was, I was watching him have fun, meeting people, you yeah. know, doing the whole, you know, selling houses, you know, starting off. And finally, I decided to get my license, put in my uh, two weeks notice, lasted uh, 24 hours. And I quit. Yeah. I didn't show I didn't show up the next day. <laughs> that was it. Yeah, that, was that was it. it. So then I walked into the office with him and Levin and said, OK, I'm, I'm ready. In. Yeah. That's so it. Cut the cord. Then, yeah. Basically, from there, you know, kind of fast forward, we, we started off real slow. I mean, it, was, it just is what it is. We had no idea what we were doing. Right. What um, year was this, by the way? 2014. Okay. Four years ago? Yeah. So, I mean, we haven't been doing this yeah, for very long. Yeah, it's been four years. Wow. We've, just, we've just been, you know, putting our head down and just grinding. Yeah. Um, and then Levin started talking about getting into franchising. We were independent at the time. Yeah, it was he, Eco Realty. Yeah, he was an independent. In Medicine Heights, yeah. Right. And uh, he started talking about franchising, and I opened up the conversation. I was like, yo, if you do this, I want in. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll figure it out. You saw an opportunity. Yeah, and he and he uh, and we took advantage of the uh, of the situation, and he had a little bit of faith in me, I guess, and it has, it's worked out. I mean, it's been great. We got three locations now: uh, Bloomfield Hills, Troy. We just moved Troy uh, into Troy from Madison Heights, and then Waterford. Um, and How many agents do you guys have? Uh, just shy of forty right now. Wow. Yeah, yeah a ton of, of agents. Yeah. It took a while, man. Like you know, it's tough. It's 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 we the way we not were, really. It took you four years, bro. <laughs> well, I mean, it uh, seems like a lifetime for me. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> but but yeah. you hit the ground once, and I think that's like probably what what people don't realize is you know oh you know you you had you used to do this and then you jump right. the, jump the nest. I mean, even if you get a little wind under your sails at the beginning, there will be a point okay. where you kind of rock bottom out. Oh, for sure. sure. Yeah, and then that's to. when you got to re- really reinvent yourself and figure out what right. what it takes to be successful and, in this business. And and and, and on that point, that's kind of like when Nick and I kind of <coughs> got into the groove of things. It's only like okay, how do we do things a little different. Mm-hmm. I mean, we all, like real estate agents, more. I mean, you guys all, we, we all do the same thing. Like, it's, yeah. it's not a secret, right? It's just, it's it's on us to get our clients and have our clients be a continued client because we treat them well or we're doing the right things or whatever the case may be. So we thought about, you know, taking advantage of how we're going to take advantage of being different. Like, that was that's always been our thing. We want to be different. Yeah. Like, these videos, mm-hmm. we love doing them. You know, we catch some heat for them, but it's okay. Like, it's, <laughs> it's they're still talking about us. That's the way we look at it, right? Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. And, and, and that's not to sound arrogant or whatever, but I don't want to be average. I don't want to be, I know my cousin. I know you guys don't want Otherwise, you wouldn't be doing this right now, right? right so right. it's, it's that's, that's kind of the mentality right. that we've had. Yeah, utilizing social, man. I mean, I, I do it, right? And I'm, I put your, you put yourself out there quite a bit. That's right, man. You're going to get people. Like, here's the thing, guys. Uh, anybody that's listening that isn't utilizing social because it isn't easy because you put yourself out there for criticism quite a bit. Yep. And it's it's you're not going to please everybody. and People are going to call you like, oh, this guy's a loser. And, well, you're talking about me, bro. You know right. who I, you no, know who I it's am. It's like those exactly. YouTube stars, yeah. right? Like that, right. what is his name, Jake Paul? Yeah. It's like, dude, I want to blow. <laughs> and he would, he would I want to blow his teeth out. But right. I know well, that he would. One, he'd probably kill me. And two, <laughs> right. I mean, he's making millions of dollars right. making YouTube videos. Right. It doesn't matter as long you as know? you're talking about it, right? right? Exactly. And he's just doing his thing. So you guys made a conscious decision early on to build a brand. As opposed yeah. to just, yeah, right? So we what? wanted to we play were in, out. Go ahead. We were in, so we were both in probably that eight months into it. And that's when we decided to start um, building brand together. Yeah. That was like when the, we were sitting in the office one day and we said, why aren't we just working together on everything? And so we sat there and started, you know, ma- created a Facebook page. Yeah. You know, made the name Ryan Michael, Nick Anthony, whatever, yeah. all that little, the little the things that go a long way, right? Pictures. Hey, <laughs> hey, we try. <laughs> My mom says that. Okay. That's about it. Yeah, they say we're pretty. It's yeah. all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, anyway, yeah. And then, yeah, from there, we just, you know, try to figure it out. And we still try to, I mean, we're still trying to figure it out. It's, it's always, it's always, always, always ending, learning. Right? Yeah, man. We, you know, we had issues with us how to figure out how to run a team. We both have different ideas. We're both type A. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just, yeah. But we've, at that point in time, it just made sense. It was just, it just made sense. Yeah. Right. We're already cousins. We're working together. Just make a play off of it, and um, and it's worked out. And I'm glad. I'm glad we have. I'm. Sh- I know he is too. And you know. And, and <clears throat> not only that, we've. I don't know everybody. He knows. He doesn't know everybody. Yeah. I know, right. So it's, it's a, on the business side of things, it just made sense. Too. So it's kind of like Sal and I's story. Like I mean, Sal and I chose early on to combine forces. I think having a a, a duo in this business is is good. You know what I mean? Like trying to trying to like 
There's know, so many ups and downs, right? It's yeah. kind of like, We dude, check each other, right? It's like yeah, a good like, cop, bad cop. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that and it can, it can somebody keep you accountable, right? Right. 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 More, more, and then yeah, if you're not in the anything. office, it's right. kind of like, what are you doing, bro? Right. As no, opposed to well, if I, you're not putting in the work, you know, you're gonna. He's, if I'm not, he's gonna call me out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no, you got to. You have to pull your weight. Sal <laughs> called me out a couple of weeks ago. It was fun. <laughs> Stop <laughs> pulling your weight. You, you just get mad. <laughs> we go back and forth. Yeah. We yeah. Have you just get started. mad and then you think about yeah, he's probably right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. If someone's calling you out. Your first, in, your first thing is like, no, dude, shut up. And right. Like, Wait a minute. Yeah. So right. Destructive feedback. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So were you, were you guys in the same branch of military? You guys deployed together? Or you guys <laughs> cash at the hip or? What? Well, we, no, no, no. We were both uh, in the Navy. So. Real quick backstory: The Marine Corps, okay. yeah, but the Marine Corps doesn't have medics, right, or ah. corpsmen, so they pull from the Navy. And fun fact: the Navy owns the Marine Corps, so there are certain jobs that each I'm branch sure the Navy doesn't guys have, like and they just mm-hmm. augment yeah, them, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and uh, so they, I was just basically placed with the, uh, a Marine unit as a corpsman. Um, he was in Navy as well, but he was in right. aviation, and now you can talk about that. Yeah. So, uh, oh, actually, I wanted to be a pilot. That's you why I joined the Navy. That's what you want to do. Yep. So my uh, recruiter, the liar that he is, <laughs> told me the best, <laughs> the, the, the best, the best route to be a pilot. He is sold to you. Be, is to be he an aviation bosun's mate. Okay. Which what that is is basically the bottom of the barrel on the flight deck. <laughs> yeah. All the Chip dirty work. Paint, so, yeah. so what I was. You're not uh, moving up from there. Do they need those? Nope. Guys? That was it. <laughs> 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 nope. That was it. No pilot. That's all I did. Yeah. No pilot. Like, nobody wants to do that so, job. Uh, we talked you into it. So I was on the flight deck. Um, Make it simple. Have you ever seen Top Gun? Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. the guys in green on the flight deck. Yep. So I was in the launch and recovery. So when the jets would come in, you know, I would, you know, do, run the engines and pull the cables across the flight deck, all that stuff. And when they take Those off. Those things are yeah. wicked, dude. You can get it's killed. It's Those crazy. things are I've snap. seen a few people uh, get, you know, get blown off. Really? Uh, yeah. A lot, a lot of bad stuff happens just because people aren't paying attention as much. Because, you know, at the same time you're running all over, all the handlers are moving the jets around so if you're not paying attention I mean, you have right enough there. 16 landing on a boat yeah i yeah. mean there's a lot <laughs> going on there right? yeah, yeah the the hook that that catches the cables about uh, i think it's about five inches yeah well, that's it wow so a lot of that's a lot of bad think about that happen. like we make a mistake we do we do a bad job or we're not good at our job yeah we, we mess up you, you're not we good at your job it, yeah. the, we in we our world yeah, to fix you it yeah, we're close yeah, you're not good at your job you get thrown overboard and you're getting fed to the fishes all right guys let's talk about some of these topics so obviously like i said i wanted to talk about um um the, the where the market is today i think that we've seen a lot of shifts There's, it's all yeah. over the news yep. but the funny thing that i'm starting to feel right now and I, and I like always to be a little bit ahead and kind of forecast what i'm feeling right now because it's just where, where we're at i'm starting to see more buyers coming out than than like let's say a month ago or two months ago we're starting to get more pre-approvals again we're getting we're getting phone calls again i think we're going to start seeing people uh in the springtime buy houses because i think the word is out now that interest rates are going up and this might be your last chance to get in and get value for your money would you agree with that yeah no i I agree and and i i definitely feel the same uh thing was you know maybe a month ago it's kind of like where is everyone? Where is everyone yeah, at? It's right, pretty dead. it was it was at least for us, anyways, and we do okay. I mean, we're not the best in the state or number one, but you know, we still clear yeah. three or thirty to fifty homes a year. Yeah. Um. And and it was that was like us. That was like that for us. It's like where is everybody at? What's going on? Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I'm getting phone calls. Yep. We're getting pre approvals to our mortgage company. Yep. We're getting you know people out of the woodwork say, hey, we want to start looking again. And I think a lot of that too that that law was part of just everybody getting their ass beat trying to get. Offers accepted. Yeah, mm-hmm. they, they quit. Make, they they quit. just quit. All the ones and that were getting tough. beat up just and stopped. I, I got a personal story with that. My wife and I, like I said, we were talking about this earlier. Is we just had an offer accepted on a house. Prior to that, we put in four at asking, and two of them I even waived my commission. One I waived an inspect, and I still got beat still out. Still, it was. I mean, yeah. at asking, like everything. So I think. <clears throat> Uh, seeing that side of things and going through the process, it's just like, okay, I can understand why people are just kind of fed up. Or it's just like, okay, now Christmas, Thanksgiving is coming, it's whatever. Figure it out when spring comes around. It's not three feet of snow when we can enjoy looking at homes. Yeah, or, it's tough right, showing houses right now. Yeah, people look at, you know, Zillow or wherever yeah. they would look, and they Fuck see... <laughs> <laughs> they see uh, the second that <laughs> homes on there for longer <laughs> than a day or two, and in their head they're probably clicking. And I know that yeah. when... You know, I talk to buyers. They're they're relying a lot more on my advice than probably their gut or their parents. There's sure. a lot of you know unsurety well, as far that's as why we're here. 
what's going to happen in the spring. Will it? Will I get more from my house if I sell in the spring? And mm-hmm. the answer to that is like, dude, rates are going up, and they're going to continue to go up, and they're going to probably cap out in the next couple of years or two. But like, you will probably lose if you wait. Yeah, no, and, and I, waiting I agree. is not a good. I, I, right yeah, no, I agree too, and not only that, the other stuff you still got to pay taxes on the house. You still have to pay utilities. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's 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 comparatively speaking, it's less money in the full transaction, but you're still rates going up. You still got to pay bills. It's all got to be taken into consideration. That's money that's mm-hmm. going out, not coming in. Right, right. right. So and that's how I explain it too. When you know we just had a client, we we're closing on Friday. He had we had the same conversation. He's like, I want to wait till spring. I want to wait till spring, but he's right. already out of the house. Well, what are you doing? What are you doing? Like, yeah. why, yeah, would, you why wait? would you wait? You still got to pay utilities. You still have to pay the tax. You still have to do all the stuff. And you're going to do it for six months when you're not even living. Li- it doesn't make any and sense. And the spring the rates hit. might be a half percent higher. Right. 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 Your, so, your cost of money is going to go up. Even yeah. if the house, you get it for 10 grand cheaper, right? I mean, you're going to essentially pay that in, in rate. Right. right. And yep. the rent until then. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You know, or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I think what happened, in my my opinion, part of it, part of it, only part of it, is that rates, you know, people that were hearing, oh, I can get 4%, and now all of a sudden I'm getting 5%, they're like, hold on, let me see what happens. Well, now they're seeing that they're not, like, going back down, so people are going to start coming out of the woodwork. I think people will start selling their houses again. I think a lot of people took their houses off for the holidays. We'll see a lot of those come back on the market in the spring, right? So there's less inventory, too, right now. Yeah. But I think right now is the right time to buy. If you're going to buy between now and the spring... Or if you're even thinking about the spring, like pull the trigger now, man. Right. I think it's the right time to no, do that, it. That too, and it's and, and as far as the buyer side is concerned, because um, at, at least for me and how I explain it is, as a buyer, take advantage of the situation. You know, like people like me who had to sell not, at a non-convenient time when I sold my house. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's only so much we can ask for. As a buyer, you can take advantage of that, right? So if if the way I look at it, if you're selling in the in the, in the bad season, quote unquote, right? And there's two feet of snow outside. There's a real reason why they're probably doing a job transfer, loss of job, mm-hmm. whatever the case may yeah. be. And then I don't mean to sound malicious, but take advantage of that, right? As I a mean, buyer, yeah, exactly. You got leverage, exactly. That's what yeah. I mean. Yeah. So yeah. if you if you're waiting till spring when you know a thousand people are trying to buy, why not try to buy? Deals with are very serious are going. right now. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of reloads, yeah. things like yep. that. It's right. like, hey, not a lot of seller has takers. to move. Right. So you could probably, like you said, beat yep. them up five, ten grand if, if the house has been on the market. That you're not going to get July, whatever, no. June, whatever the case. I mean, <laughs> no. it's not. It's like three months of Black Friday. Right. You're looking on, the, yes. on the flip side, that's a good way to put it. How we're, we're talking to the sellers the same way. Like, if something comes in, it need to take it serious. You know, a lot of times, it, just because it's lower, they even, you know, they won't jump on it, but now is the time to like really take any off all yeah. offers seriously. Right. Yeah, yeah that's everything sure. matters. They're few and far in between. Yeah, and so everything matters right now. You guys are you guys are seeing an uptick in activity, or is Paul just I, realizing I, in the it last because month? Of the I'd say conversation oh, yeah. from Sal. No, 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 for no, sure. no. Yeah, no, 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 no. I know the market. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bitch. <laughs> Paul was just sleeping at the wheel. He's like, oh man, Sal talked to me now. Yeah, no, activity. no, no, that, no. That's true. At least for us, we've definitely seen an uptick. Yeah. No, you know what I mean. It's been recent though. Let me give you the numbers. Hold on. Go ahead. Mortgage are up five and a half percent and they're actually up two percent from this time last year Boom. mortgage applications so and that and nine percent actually of that is uh purchase transactions so the numbers are also okay reiterating the fact that i'm smart as shit <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm in a rare form no it's okay well i forget what we were uh sellers. oh yeah and the, and the other thing just real quick to piggyback what, what, what off what, what, what nick what was saying what are you doing what are you doing i'm trying to go live uh-huh. okay. we are live right there. oh yeah i'm trying i'm trying to figure out how to uh my my whole family uh, uh, bitching about it. I got it. I got it. We'll put, we'll um, but it. yeah, just to piggyback. <laughs> no, go put it up. We'll put, put it up. up. Yeah, put uh, it cares. up. You can do it while I talk. Um, no, but to piggyback off Nick too, and and not just to take any offer that comes in, mm-hmm. but around this time, it's like okay, you know, usually your first offer, maybe second, is probably best one you're gonna get. Yeah. Right. So yeah. you gotta take that serious. Yeah, and you're then, not you're not waiting for ten offers to come in right no, now. No, no, not now. No, 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 no. I mean, it, possibly. I mean, it's. I think it all depends too, and a lot of it has to do with the realtor itself and making sure you price a home accordingly. I, yeah. You know, I I I do. Um, I work with an investor friend of mine, um, and he does a lot of flips in Waterford. You know, we we listed a house. We're about to close on it. Uh, in a week or two, we listed it at 140, and we got 160 out of it. There you go. You know what I mean. So yeah. I think a lot of it too has to do with just making sure you're in that sweet spot, even during a rough time or a rough season. You still can, as far as the seller's concerned, you still can make out. But you know, I more think often I, than not, it's probably I, not going to happen. I've got a good go question uh, for you guys. Yeah. A, a client brought something up to my attention yesterday that I'd never really thought of. 
you know, and she goes, okay, we had, you know, there's multiple showings scheduled for this property yesterday. Mm -hmm. All right. An offer came in in the morning and they accept the offer and cancel the showings. Right. And the mm -hmm. client to me, I'm like, well, okay. Yeah. That's what I hear all the time. Right. But mm -hmm. the client goes to me, why would not, why would they not wait to see the other showings at least that day to see if any other offers came out? I guess, what would your answer be to that, to that buyer? I'll take that. I can. Okay. So, uh, so for me, um, I, uh, for the buyer, or for the seller, for this buyer who had a showing schedule later that day, and she's like, "What? what the oh hell? yeah, you know, so like she took it off the table. Like, yeah, right, right, right. What if so, we had a better offer? Right, exactly. I feel so, like their agent was doing them as you. Know, I didn't take that. <clears throat> the 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 way I look at it is, unless it's pre negotiated, obviously, I as a as the listing agent, I'd want to your George, entertain everything. Your right. Your job is to get your seller the most money possible. Mm -hmm. For you to cut it short because you're trying to get a paycheck is just wrong. That's, that's what it is, though. The best it, right? deal. That's what it right. is. You that's know? not necessarily right. like if someone is. comes well, in and know that it could be the only one that ever. Right, but, sure. but yeah. so, and you don't want to so wait, right? If, and maybe if you as a seller one. know, yeah. I want to get Jeez. this. This is the offer I'm looking for, yeah. and, and that first offer is exactly what you're looking for. Yeah. I mean, I would take it. We don't know what that offer was. It could have had a deadline by noon, right? And it was what they wanted, so it's like that's why I said unless it's like pre-negotiated in the offer, whatever the case may be, that's one thing. But if it's just a like okay, we got an offer. I I at least would feel more comfortable saying, hey, you know, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, like, let's give it four more hours, five more hours, at least finish these showings off because you yeah. don't know. And Nobody push knows. On the buyer's agent, from, like, hey, we got an offer. Right, bingo. you guys got to make a decision. If that buyer's making an time. offer that early, they want the house. They're not going anywhere. Right, right. and that, and that's the thing too. Even if there's a time limit, usually, there's like, if you're gonna if you if you go over an hour on the time limit, I mean. Yeah. Are they really gonna walk away after an hour? No, no they're not gonna. No, um, but it's but yes, yeah, so that's. I mean, I don't. I don't think it's personally necessary. Necessarily, right at the end of the day, it's on the sellers mm -hmm. to make that call. But for for us and the way we do things, you know, our we have to do what's right and what's right yeah. is try to get the most money out of out of the transaction for the seller. Because as far as commissions, cause it sounds like I'm talking about myself, but you know, an extra five grand. And the commission we get paid is a couple Pennies. hundred bucks for us. Like it doesn't. Yeah. That's, it's not that matter. Well, it's I think it's a good lesson to the buyers the too, because the you know what what they're saying was well we you know we scheduled the show in for Wednesday or uh, Tuesday you know but the so two days before the house is on the market right, right? Yeah. and it was right. like well bottom line is it's not like a car you can't go and put like a two hundred dollar deposit on it and say hey hold it for right me. right I'll come look at it right yeah no yeah. you can't do that right so you got to get out there and you got to be serious <coughs> yep. bingo I'm gonna I'm, oh go ahead I was gonna say uh, I mean it might be a little off topic but um, we we're talking about sellers entertaining any offer that comes in right now yeah what are you guys saying to sellers that are that are looking to list their house in these months to maybe accentuate the features or, or make it stick out even more yeah. are, are you telling people to invest in staging or or what what are your what's your advice yeah so we kind of have the, s the same pitch every time we go into a listing they always the first question they ask us what do we do to get ready for the market our, our, yeah. yeah and we'd say the same thing as little as possible the, m which, the main which thing is the main thing want to change out granite no know, yeah the main oh, thing right. for us is what what do the buyers think about as soon as they walk in number one is what it look cleanliness you know, you could have all the updates in the world, but if it stinks like shit, they're not going to buy it. <laughs> yeah. 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 No yeah. deuces. So it needs, right. to, it needs to be spotless. <laughs> Which is crazy. It needs to be clean. Decluttered. It, it needs decluttered. Take the family pictures down. Nobody it, nobody wants to see Aunt nope. Tilly on the, on the shelf. You know, religion's a big thing. No, she's smoking. I know, I'm <laughs> religious, but that stuff needs to come down, you know, because sure. some people don't like that stuff. It needs to be, uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> she's almost <a> white box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the uh, main thing is cleanliness for us. We say the same thing every time we walk into a house. If it's not clean, if it stinks like yeah, that. Yeah, but you know what? I got this crack. I've been thinking about fixing. and I got this So this is the way I do it. And I already know what you're going. And the, yeah. and the reason what he's saying, um, and just to piggyback of what he's saying, is we want our sellers, the clients we work with, Again, to make as much money as you can, right? So if you're spending thirty grand before you even put your house in the market, that's silly to you're me. You're not getting it back. Let it some, and they, again, not to sound malicious, but let it be somebody else's headache. You might be able to get away with selling your house sure. and only spending five grand instead of thirty. Like, be smart, right? Mm -hmm. Make it showable. Clean your house. Well, do, do the right things. Yep. But if somebody goes through and it gets to an inspection, there's some issues. Then you start negotiating. Yeah. Don't yeah. just don't just right. dump a ton of money to get your house I in the market that may not sell. Right. Saying like the analogy of the car. Right, but it's like you got a car; it's got a ton of miles. Sure. It's all dirty. You're driving in it, smoking in it, whatever. Right? right? Go get it detailed. Spend right. 150 Bingo. bucks, and boom. Right? right? Exactly. I mean, go get. Might a have 100,000 miles. It might have you know a hole in the seat here. Or there. Might, 
make you a couple grand. Damn, it's it's clean. Right. Right. Yeah. It's like yeah. Brad. If he was yeah. going to, if Brad was going to a wedding, he could clean up pretty well and, and show pretty good. But what's under the hood is not great. <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> Brad, it's not. Brad great. looks like your son. Story Damn, of my life. <laughs> <laughs> you do not look that Paul, no. Oh, check. He looks like he looks like Ari. <laughs> you kind of do look like Ari. Are you my? Oh. Are you his father? I am. Okay. I'm sorry. That makes sense. But so talk about detailing. Amazon, my wife told me last night, actually ha- is selling maid services now. They will, you can They're buy, rule the world. You can Amazon get, scares me. You can get a maid <laughs> through Amazon. They come up, they charge you, they clean all your house, whatever, and they charge your uh, card saved on your Amazon account. That's, that's yeah, crazy. That's just insane. wait till they start, you can get your mortgage through there. Yeah. Asshole. And real, realtors. <laughs> no. Great. Uh, yeah. Then we can just I do mean, this for the rest of our no, life. Don't do your mortgage. <laughs> 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 Amazon sucks. Actually, they're sweet. I know they're awesome. Amazon has your phone blowing up with shipping notifications. That, yeah. that, that hurt Nick to say. Yeah. yeah. Amazon's the best. I order something, it's on my house. They're really hard to hate. Yeah. Right. They, do, they do a good job. Uh, so you guys decided uh, fairly recently to, to get in the mortgage business. Yeah. Yeah. So, so talk um, to me about that. Yeah. So that, that was me, um, myself and... Uh, so, no, I, no yeah, plugs. sorry. You know, it was one of those deals like um, it was an opportunity that presented itself. You know, Model Mortgage is an offshoot of Remax, okay? Mm-hmm. And I know you guys know this, but for people who are listening, yeah. you don't. That it's just basically it's like a franchise it's, model. Bingo. Right. Um, and, you know, Levin uh, has one, and I saw what he was doing with it, and it, it got my attention. And yep. uh, I'm glad I did it. I would, I would do it again. Um, and it's just another, you know, spoke in my wheel. The way I look at it, it's 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 not necessarily it's going to be the end all be all. But you know, with the title company that I'm, I'm part owner with, and now real estate, and now mortgage company, I'm just you know trying to diversify. A right? lot of That's people are doing this, guys. Do. A lot of people are doing the one stop shop, right? If right. I'm a, if I'm a buyer, uh, I can get my pre approval from the same ent- like same group. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can get my house from the same group. It's mm-hmm. kind of it, it, mirroring everything on the past. You know, I used to sell against that, but I, I think we're going towards that. I think we're going more yeah. towards being able to do a one-stop shop. You have to. Yeah. Well, it, just because of the speed of everything, technology in general, like you, we still do face-to-face stuff. Like, we gotta com- go, we got to compete. And yeah. how do we compete? We try to make things just as easy as technology. Right. And to do that, you got to have kind of like a one-stop shop. And with that, he opened up a, a processing company. Yeah. So he's still kind of involved with the mortgage. We send our deals to them. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean that's it's it's been fun. We're How complicated down. is it o- to open up a? Uh, it's uh, tough, dude. <laughs> and I don't write more. I don't. I don't write mortgages. Yeah, I don't write mortgages. You guys are like rocket scientists to me. Like this whole <laughs> mortgage thing, it's it's incredible what uh, these guys do and you guys do. Um, I, I enjoy it's it, tough. but as far as like the day to day stuff, like. I don't. I don't really know. I can have a basic conversation, but but backing up to your original question, how tough it was tough, man. It was you well, know. especially in this market, right? Where yeah. it's like there's no refis, there's no easy right. deals, right? Right. So yeah, no. you it, put your head down and grind. It's good to be multifaceted, though, as as far as business goes, because you know if the if the market does slow down as far as real estate goes, mm-hmm. usually, I mean, rates will come down to a degree, and right. boom, now there's a whole level of people that need refinancing. Right. And, and that's the second level of, of the difficulty of opening a mortgage company. The, the first barrier is, is all the compliance. And, it's horrible. And it's, and the then once you finally get licensed and, and you can you can write loans, yeah. then shit, how do I get loans? Well, like, <laughs> right, right, it's right. a hard business. Right, right. It's a and then very, you got to worry about the business. accounts you got to get yeah. with you know, all the wholesalers. And, and to be and clear, your agents don't have to use your mortgage company. Oh, 100%. They don't. No, not at all. And I don't. Nope. None of them do. No, I don't. I, 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 <laughs> yeah. None of them do. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, call no, us. Yeah, exactly. Call <laughs> these guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, you know, I, I, listen, man. There's more than enough for everybody. Yeah, it's the way I look enough. at it. Yeah, and yeah. you know, Nick and I, we do okay, and we never really ran into you guys or had to compete with you guys ever. No, you know? and so no. I'm saying, so that's the way I look at. It. I know we've had conversations. The about pie's this before. big, man. If and you do it right, if you do it right, and you're a good person, you'll you be do fine. good business. Listen, and, the, and the bottom line is, is whether you're the owner, whether you're uh, a loan officer working there, it's it's your game. It's right. your business, so yeah. Yeah. It, you know that's that's all it is, right? right. And you guys can provide all the support and everything, sure. and right. but you can't really lead a horse to water. You no. kind of have right. to want it, right? right. I will right. tell exactly. you, you guys have a good group. Uh, you know, everybody over there seems to be working hard. It, like yeah. uh, your brand that you guys have created we all is have really beards. good. <coughs> What's that? We all have a lot of beards yeah. in our offices. I like your beards. <laughs> yeah. No, beards. it's it's just a, a philosophy that was like instilled in us, you know. <coughs> but we, it's hard work. It is hard. You just got to work hard. It well, is. I was well, watching. One, uh, I was listening to one of your other podcasts. One of your questions was, uh, "What's the biggest threat?" Yeah, and I was thinking about it. I, I didn't see any other competing businesses, anything else to to be a threat than ourselves. 
Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, that's a great, that's facial, a great that's answer. It. I am my own biggest If I like, slack yeah. off the next three months, it's going to suck. It's, it's mm-hmm. all on you, right? right. So yeah. Yeah. That's what I think people need to realize. Like everybody gets so caught up in, oh, this person's doing that, or this person is a competition and that person. And people are focused so much right now in the mortgage business of all these ancillary things that are affecting their business. Bro, just work harder. Right. Yeah. Uh, be better. Play better. Yeah. Be yeah, better, the, play the better. The outside right. plays will only make you adapt your game, right? Right. Let's say a margin compression which, happens or yeah, Zillow does right. this or whatever, which, blah, blah, blah. Which strengthens strengthens your game. Yeah. Right? yeah. Just work, yeah, work adapt, on your right? – because like, let's be honest. I, you don't own 100% market share. No. I don't own 100% never market share. Well. 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 I don't got right? – we, we so, never even ran into each other. No, that's, yeah. a, that's right? my thing. Right, exactly. Right. So – it's, and we're it, all doing fine. Yeah, yeah we're all yeah. doing all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like th- that's the trick. I think. I think people just do. If any loan officers or real estate agents, stop worrying about what everybody else yep. is doing and start thinking about your Mind business. Mind your and own you, business. Yeah. It's, it's human nature. Pe- I mean, uh, those you want to blame your faults on exactly. other, other things. Exactly. That's right. exactly what it is. They're Quit setting themselves up to have an excuse and later. The nothing's more, more, nothing's more powerful than when you turn that switch on. Yeah. And realize that you can do it, yeah. right? Or right. if you've done it before, it's if like, don't dude, it I closed. takes up so much time and effort worrying about other people. If, exactly. dude, if you have a three so million dollar month and horrible. you are in a slum afterwards, it's like, mm-hmm. how something's wrong in here, right? Right? Yeah. Something's right. wrong right. in your brain. Right. 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 Yeah, it's harder for people to look in the mirror and say, "Man, I, I got to do something," instead of saying, "That's affecting me. The market's affecting me. This person did yeah, this no. to me. That person did." Well, you know. that, no, that is for a rude awakening. Yeah, no, that is very true. But in our very short career as of now um what i've noticed when you know the, the the individuals we don't know like our friends will you know give us a hard time about the stuff we do in our social media yeah. stuff, whatever it's it's gonna yeah, happen, all my friends right? make fun of me that's why they're friends hey, right? exactly, exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah. but what i notice is the people that we don't know or really aren't acquainted with or just random passing people random people commenting the stuff. sweet yeah. the people that talk the most shit about you the ones that are doing a lot less than you someone call it area <laughs> is that the, is that Trump? Hello, is somebody somebody does not like either. Sorry, I hung up on him. <laughs> it's all right. Call it's okay. Well, okay. yeah, no, but like I was you saying, gave the number out. Right. On the last yeah. show. And I was like, yeah. man, I wonder how many people are gonna start. Calling. What if they right. wanted to talk to us about something? Yeah. What if that was Bill? We should start. I, 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 that probably was. <laughs> he would do that too. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like I was saying, well, it's just like the people that you, I I notice that uh, and, and in general, it's usually people that are doing a lot less than you. So whatever. yeah, you can't worry about it. You yeah. can't, don't worry about the hate, dude. Just yeah. focus I kind of like it. Yeah, me too. That means people are they're paying attention to you. Yeah, it's if working. Ta- if you're talking bad about me, you're still talking about me. Like like Glover, like everybody it. bags on Glover. We don't talk about that. Still right. talking about him. Though. Uh, but you're still talking about him, right? Still people talking. people bag on all these people that are yep. doing doing yep. well. That's because they're doing. I'm sure his bank account is just fine. Well, yeah, <laughs> bro. Right? And I don't think he cares. Can about I hold you a though. small no, loan? Glover? You don't matter to him. Hold a loan. Let me get a small loan. Bro. Last topic. I, w- I did want to talk about GM closing their plants. I think this is poignant in our like so for. The, People who haven't heard, GM is cutting like closing plants all across the U.S. Not all across. There's a bunch of them that they're closing. Big ones right. in Ohio and Michigan, Michigan, and actually in Canada too. Yep. So fourteen thousand jobs. That was eighteen. I got fourteen. So four, whatever. It's, so it's a lot. Thousands of jobs, yep. right? Are we going to be lost in this? And uh, so is this like is this the first major crack that we're seeing in the jobs market? Because for me, you, you know, I've always said. Jobs are good. Yep. Economy will be fine, even through a recession. As long as we c- c- continue to create jobs, we're fine. I and mean, we talk about all that, we talk about it week after week. I feel like is is the, the market outlook. You know, is what's going to be the next thing. Is as, as long as jobs are good and people are employed, the economy is going to be okay. We'll be all right. Housing market's going to be good. Yeah. Uh, to your point, I mean, this could be the first sign. I mean, they got the big tax break and they said thanks and peace well, out. Come on. Well, you got to look at the no, crack. True, but you got to I mean, look like at what two caused billion the crack. Or something crazy, right? right? Like yeah. a, if there's a crack in your foundation, it just didn't happen. Right. Yeah. What, yeah. what what's happening? What's causing that? Is it tech you know, technology replacing jobs? Is yeah. it inefficiencies That's what I think it is. that they're yeah. cutting? Yeah. Is it realizing that one guy there, right, and promoting him and paying him more can do the jobs of four yeah. or five people. Right, exactly. You know, I mean, right. I know a lot be. of people that work at GM. and It could be anything. And sales, God too. Bless, I mean, that's take you know, I know a lot of people who don't do a lot of GM either. Right. They just are like a Corporation, by chilling. law, the definition of corporation, they have to, by law, maximize their profits. They're for profit, bro. Th- that's so what here's they're the designed deal. to do. This is so what I see that I'm seeing. This So I have a different spin. I don't think it's doom and gloom. I think GM is smart. They're positioning themselves. They're they're being they're 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 looking at the foresight and they're they're repositioning their business to be more competitive in the market sure. that's coming ahead. So, t- like the, the the other side of this is they don't cut the jobs, they bleed money, and they don't evolve, and they go out of business completely. And right. there's or they play catch up forever. Right. There's 30, 40, 50,000 jobs. I'm sure, they lost. don't want another bailout. Right. 
right? No. So they got to figure out, yeah. you know, how to increase Protect their themselves. bottom line and and you know it. Uh, I will tell you that places like Hamtramck that like have a plant that potentially might be closing down, they're freaking out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. All the suppliers are, around it, they're I mean, freaking out. Yeah. Detroit is still, I mean, these the Motor City, right? They used to be huge. It, it, it still is a yeah. major part of the economy in Detroit, in Detroit, and, and yeah. surrounding areas. I mean, for sure. GM's building. Uh, they started this summer. They they got a, a contract to build a new plant in Flint or just outside Flint in, in Burton, and they have three other desolate plants all around it. And they're building a brand new one. And I wonder if they're going to stop production on that. I mean, that's supposed to be a big deal in that area. Probably not, because that one is. They're probably creating it the way that the new market needs right. it to be created. I mean, it's, so. It's crazy. So it's it's like it's like moving out of an old house and and getting like get, just it's getting a good time to be a recruiter right now. You know, sure. a lot of those guys are. will be placed. I mean, sure. you know, yeah. if, when push comes to shove, hey, I got a good job for you in South Carolina. Yeah, boom, let's, we're gone. A lot of headhunters. Let's get Tesla to come into Michigan. What are the yeah. two biggest employers <laughs> in Michigan? I, I mean, the, the two big big industries, uh, mortgages, uh, because there's a lot yeah. of banks Mortgage, here. Banking, in, in uh, right? Quicken, Flagstar, yeah. UWM, all yeah. these companies, and then also uh, automotive. Obviously, there's other ones, sure. but. Both those industries are going to take a hit over yeah, the next few sure. years, in my opinion, and I think that's going to do something to the market. I, I think, but I think there's enough jobs out there if you really need to find a yeah, job. But it, it's cyclical. If you yeah, look back, yeah, yeah every ten fine. to fifteen years, the market takes a dip. And the difference this time is, it's not two thousand eight. We're not going to have an no, implosion never be like in the housing market. The housing market is insulated because the mortgages we've done. Is, are, I mean, I've said this a million times. The, the, if anybody's waiting for the housing market to crash like it did in two thousand eight, you're going to be waiting for a long time. Right. It's not. It's not. Right. Right. So All much. you people losing your jobs out there that that want some revenue. Give me a call. I know some places where you can open a grow shop and get. Oh, you're on the weed tip, right? Yeah, now. I mean, yeah. we talked about it a couple of weeks ago, yeah. right? It's, it's hey, a. I got a question. It's, it's legal. about that. What 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 do you? So I was. How we're, how these dispensaries and grow shops can be able to put their money away, like in banks and stuff? Because right, you can't really do that. So my well, buddy, it's legal. that's my, still the no, problem. It's not legal. No, no it's not uh, credit legal. unions. No, so you just so nailed it. So my buddy really? in Colorado, because I'm had trying a big to figure problem. that out, we so buy a credit union, open man. up a bank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> let's open up a credit union. Because my buddy in saying. Colorado had to buy a bank and buy a vault to put his money in for a long time. Mm-hmm. Finally, bought a bank. He wow. Yeah. The yeah, they were making a lot of money, man. Yeah. Uh, so he deal. bought a bank. They were on uh, MSNBC, Pop Errands of uh, mm-hmm. of Colorado. Uh, anyways, long story short, but finally they they got a credit union. Now here's the crazy part that he told me. I'm going to tell everybody a funny story that he told me. So for the first three years when they weren't banks, he had to go in and pay the IRS money, right? Cause Cash like every month, like, like right? sixty grand. So bro. he had to go in there, Jesus. and he would said he would sit in a room smaller than this with three old ladies that counted thousands upon thousands. Of, he said he was there for four hours. Yeah, and he because like, he couldn't write a check. No, no, he can't it's, like, it's all cash. cash. cash money. Yeah. So he literally sh- showed me this picture of this duffel bag, literally full of thousands of dollars. Mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, he's like, yeah. that's, that's how we had to do movies. it. Yeah, no, no, that's real talk. So, and you I, can't bring your phone. We in had there. a few clients. You also there. can't yeah. launder it. Yeah, no, exactly. You know? yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, can't do I that. Had, can't <laughs> open up dry cleaner in the <laughs> front of your dispensary. No, that's true. I had a I had a friend of mine tell me the same thing. He he is one of his buddies that I know runs a shop out in Colorado, and he's like, they would literally take anywhere between sixty and a hundred grand every month. To the IRS. To the IRS and just sit there and they'd have to sit and count it out. So I asked Because they I go, can't put it in the, like, they, they can't do anything. I go, I go what did you start yet. doing? Because you can't bring your phone in there. He goes, right. bro, I read like four or five books. <laughs> 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 I was like, <laughs> Scott, you read books, bro? I know you. You don't like reading books, man. Uh, all right. So I'm going to get into these three questions for you guys. Uh-oh. These, are, these okay. are the three questions. We've been doing this a lot lately. It's been going well. Bring so um, what annoys you most about loan officers? Oh. <laughs> In general, uh, not your loan officers. Yeah, see. just in Are general. Well, I mean, because I think a lot of loan officers want to work with real estate agents, but they're all annoying. So, so here, here's I actually had this conversation with uh, Nathan Nix. Yeah, um, he was a great agent. Yeah, he's he's a good dude, man. And and again, is also a military guy. Yeah, he's yeah. A, he was a this Marine Corps sniper. Um, but he asked me the same question because we all collaborate. You got to. Yeah, it doesn't matter competing business, whatever you it's you figure it out all together. Right. But for me, and it's I wouldn't say annoying, but I think it would be more beneficial. Is even though there's still the no news, good news conversations that we have that realtors have to have with buyers, I still think, as far as I'm concerned, that should those conversations should be had more. Even if there's nothing going on, so what? Call them three, four times a week. Hey, just checking in. How the the kids? Still, yeah, the loan officer. I'm sorry. You know, how's the kids? How's the wife? Yeah, still we're still good. Yada yada yada. Instead of because I know we've had the conversations more often than not. It's like yeah, if you're not hearing anything, it's good. Yeah, no, well, no, that's no, a, no, that's no, unsettling, no, right? No, so, no, no. Um, no news is not good news. No right. news yeah. scares the shit out of you. Yep. Yeah. Sometimes, like right? This. Exactly. Biggest and transaction in your life. Right. Or anything. Exactly. So, yeah. 
and and communication and communication it's you know it's it's always the answer but and i don't think it can ever be perfect because mm-hmm. you know everybody's different they're gonna want to be talked to every buyer's got different it blows problems. my mind yeah. that someone in a deal with me like a real estate agent <laughs> this is what annoys me about real estate agents <laughs> <laughs> they are i really send you a, a lot trust i send you a, a text they're annoying trust me i send you a text <laughs> or call you to ask you a question about something that involves don't your clients your deal your Answer sellers them. And you don't call me back yeah, or no, even acknowledge rude. my text? Right. All the time. Hey, I need to ask you something about the uh, appraisal, you think right, or scheduling the appraisal. You no call back. You think that's because majority of realtors are part-time anyways? I yeah. think, most, I think the majority so of realtors are Austin, Austin, it's the, it's the no, don't think ones so, who do, do the most no, business. Yeah, that's yeah. Why. Sorry. You know? Oh, I'm too busy to deal with that. I don't yeah, care. I don't right? care about that. You're, you're that's our busy. problem with real estate agents. Right. Trying well, to get a deal done. Like, right. Yeah. Really, bro? Answer your phone, We got bro. a contract. I got a paycheck coming eventually. I don't got to do anything right. else. It's all right. the time. You've got 600 10. Zillow reviews. You've got all this, you know, this big face, but you won't call me to help get your deal done and ultimately service your seller. Right. Yep. You know? I, what's, I what's, think the, what's their name? kills me. <laughs> I, I, I have an idea who you, but it doesn't matter who it is. But I, I, I have no, no, no. We probably all have no, an idea no, in our head because it's so just, fucking no, common. This just happened yeah. not even that long ago on an offer I was trying to submit on a property. I yeah. couldn't even get a hold of that listing agent. Yeah. To even talk yep. to them and have to put a submit an offer. When I go see time. them, you know, on Facebook or whatever, doing the, right. You see like, posting and stuff. You can't call me back. Yeah. I see them at the closing table. They're like, eh. Yeah. Motherfucker. All right, so it's sellers the lack of communication. Yeah. Sellers yeah. trying to list yeah. your home. Well, I communication say, in the way they try to rec- get our business. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. So talk about that. Yeah. So, so tell me about we, that. We talked about it a little bit when we were at when we were having cigars and whiskey. Yeah. What's annoying <laughs> about a, a, a working out and like, drinking? Yeah, water. we were at the gym. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gym. We uh, smoked cigars and drank a lot of bourbon. <clears throat> I just I can't. Which we got to do again, by the way. Yeah. Nine out of ten. Uh, loan officers have the same pitch. Hey, I'll call you. I back. got this great program. I, you know, <laughs> all about the programs and that. But like, nobody cares. Nobody cares about your programs. If 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 we get along, that's and it. We can click and we can. You know, that's so much more. Get to know me, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Call me. Ask me about my wife. Yeah. Have kids. Let's get go get some me. dinner. Yeah. I don't care about what you offer because nine out of ten. I don't 10 kiss loan on officers the first date. Kind of, they're man, gonna you know? be or <laughs> somewhat <laughs> rude. <laughs> wow. You know, if we're, if we're friends, you know, it might take a little bit longer, but it's going to be more organic in the long run, and we're going to end up being friends and doing business. So I think that's really good advice. What? So I'll, I'll just tell you, like, me personally, like, Sal and I are very big on just creating relationships, and that's kind of how we yeah. built our business, right? We just we don't care. Like, we, we just want to meet everybody and be cool with everyone. Part of uh, relationships are being available, yep. right? Yep. Yeah, like, if, I, if a girl was trying to date me, which... But Who would want to do that? <laughs> and she calls... <laughs> She texts me and I don't text her back. I mean, what type of message does that sound? Sure. Right, right. Plain and high. I Very feel like simple. that's why people work with me is because I get right. man. This guy always answers phone. This guy always. Answers. Sal's always ready to fuck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. So, you gotta yeah, be ready, baby, brother. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think <laughs> just re- <laughs> look. There, there's relationships that Sal and I like. We just we like get we like to get to know people, dude. Yeah. And it, we work with people that we like. To ultimately, like you could have all the bells and whistles, and that's sure. all good, and we can add value, and we can do all this stuff. But ultimately, dude. If we're not cool, if we don't like like each other, yeah, we're probably matter. not gonna. It's not. That's not. It's a right. relationship it yeah. business. Well, that's our style. I mean, uh, the the brokerage side of things. That's yeah. our style. Rec- we don't really recruit. We try to attract and get to know people, people and then like minded. Six people. months down the road, they say, "Okay, yeah, let's, let's do it. Right. So, and, that, and just piggyback off that real quick is just that that's Nick brought that up, and I don't know if he heard it or just there was an epiphany or whatever. But you know, we were trying to figure out this recruiting game, and then you know, Nick was like, "Let's just be attractive, like." Not in a physical sense. Of course, course we are. Yeah, of course. Well, we, already <laughs> done. we already nailed that. <laughs> right? so, <laughs> uh, but no, but it real, I mean, seriously, it's just like put out content, give value. Don't always ask. Like Gary, Gary V, some people like Just him, put content out, yeah, but it's add value. Like, like it's like for free. Book, right. It's like it's book, jab, jab, right hook. It's like give, 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 then ask for something. Right. right? So always, so that's kind of. How we were doing this process? We, yeah, we were yeah. trying to be attractive, this, et cetera. Et cetera. Word. This yeah. is the word I get. I get. We get solicited all the time. It's always like, "Hey, man, uh, where's the deal?" Well, a few men, right? Uh, the, the, like, I don't want to talk to you. Right, not right. here. Yeah. See you later. Right. <laughs> See you later, bro. Uh, all right. Next question: Who's your favorite athlete and why? Oh, mercy. Uh, <laughs> Current athlete or can they be any athlete, bro? Yeah. Okay. No, and you're not one of them because you're not athletic. I <laughs> uh, do. I am it. <laughs> He's so a mean hacky I sack am. player, dude. I'm probably <laughs> better <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> my twisted steel so, and sex appeal. Dude. Oh wow! <laughs> you, play, you play good darts. That's about it. I'll probably get a lot of heat for this, but actually, Conor McGregor. I like Conor. He's cocky. Yeah. He's yeah. an yeah. asshole. He's arrogant. Oh. But, just like you. But just like me. Thanks. <laughs> I don't know if you ever seen that uh, that documentary, Notorious, on Netflix. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was a pile of garbage when he started. Garbage. He was on mm-hmm. welfare. 
Yeah. You know, Total is a great story. Yeah. It's a, Came he, from nothing, worked his ass off. His his girlfriend was there all, every step of the way. You don't become Conor McGregor by not money. working hard. All her money went to him. I mean, now he's got hundreds of millions of dollars and he's cocky. I, I probably would be, too. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's the yeah. reason why I like him. More Conor's so great. It's a that? present story. I think that's yeah. a great answer. We that's can all good. go back, but for right uh, now. That's yeah, well, I, my, my favorite sport is football. Okay. I'll always be I played a little in college. I um, don't call me Stafford. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Shut up, man. But it's gonna be you're not probably gonna. It's gonna be the like same feeling probably. But uh, Tom Brady, like you can't same, knock Brady. Sa- bro. No, it's same thing. Like Brady's was he awesome. the last r- draft pick in his class? Like and now he's the, the goat, right? So, um, so not to get in <laughs> who is Aaron Rodgers. Uh, nah, what? bro. Get you see here, the record bro. right now? You're I'm just stupid, saying. Bro. You sleeping? Well, I mean, are you dumb? <laughs> I mean, he's good. He's a team, oh, he's good. He's, he's good. good. A team. He's good. But it's good. not. I mean, bro, you put Brady any. Give Brady the Lions. He'll fucking right. right. yeah, three, yeah. three scores. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's that would be mine. It's just you know the whole story, the whole backstory of him, and you know just kind of like us in the sense of we, we hope to be that great in our industry eventually. If not, we'll, I well, we'll I find out. But that's the idea: is to strive to be that level. Nobody knew us. It's just like everybody. Nobody yeah. knew, knows you when you start out. It's no. just how hard you work, yep. your work ethic, the person you are, the, see, nobody knows. You know, the stuff you do in your community. Like It's, it's just the whole thing. I like. Well, the I thing that those two shot. guys have in common that I think is, is speaks volumes on the way you guys think is they both have sick work ethics. Yeah. That's the bottom line. Insane. Yeah. No, right? insane. insane work ethic. Probably yeah. higher than anybody in this room just because it's a different level of work ethic. Yeah. Yeah. Right? No, I'm yeah. sure I'd last like four minutes if I'm lucky. Zero. Like yeah, the, bro. Their they're daily... Their agenda, yeah, mm-hmm. they're yeah. they're grinding to be the best, and right? And th- th- they don't. Brady wouldn't be Brady if he didn't work as hard as Brady works, Bingo. right? Connor wouldn't be Connor if he didn't work as hard as Connor worked, oh, right? Yeah. So not at all. Um, all right, l- last question, boys. Uh, if you weren't in real estate, what would you be doing? Race car driver. <laughs> Race car <laughs> driver, hands down. Really, my dream job. All right. What kind? Stock car, Indy car, Indy car. Wow. I don't know why, but you're not French was, enough, bro. Uh, Aren't the, all the <laughs> best ones around you? Like, I'm not skinny you enough. Fit right? you, right? <laughs> you won't fit in the car. <laughs> yeah, I don't think yeah. I fit. Um, for me, I, I think I, I think I'd like to get in like politics. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know. It's, I know. Oh, look I at your, your, your cousin. He's like, what? Yeah. Like a little yeah, just, a child over here. Yeah, yeah, politics. Yeah. Yeah. Politics. Really? No, I mean, I don't know at what level, but yeah. um, you know, I think it, boring I, uh, or lobbyist. I think would be cool too. Their paycheck's probably really sweet. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, no, I think somewhere that that would probably be something you can do. Poly- you know that yeah. we had the mayor on the show, and he 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 has his own day job and everything. He gets forty he gets forty dollars a month to be the mayor. Just FYI. Really? Yeah. forty dollars a month. That's God all he gets paid. And he what do they call and it? He, is a weak mayor? Weak it, mayor. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's literally weak mayor. And I'm like, well, you're a weak mayor. He's wow. like, yeah, that's what it's called. I'm like, wow, wow, that's weak that, man. I've always wanted to get into right? finance, like on Wall Street, be a banker. That'd be cool too. It sounds sexy. What a work ethic. I mean, no, that's a rat race. That's right, race. Have you ever been to New York and seen these guys yeah. walking? They don't look they're healthy. No, no. no. there's a lot because they're doing. <laughs> there's a lot of cocaine. There's a lot there of cocaine. Getting drunk. I don't know if I can well, say dude, it. There's just <laughs> a lot <laughs> of <laughs> reasons. There's a lot of work getting done too. I mean, you yeah. see those guys walk out of there. It's like we have a jet they get a long day. Cocaine. Like think of <laughs> think of those days where you work. You know, showings at nine a.m. all the way till nine p.m. Right, right, right. right, right. You're right. right. doing that every day. Right, that's really terrible. All right, guys, we're running out of time. So tell the audience how they can get a hold of you if they need to. You know, buy, sell a house, work your company mortgage your yeah. real estate company your so process alone oh, I mean, <laughs> what the fuck I mean, everything baby <laughs> so uh, simple my cell phone's nine two four eight nine three five nine one nine two um we'll say one say one more time two four eight nine three five nine one nine two think about that yeah uh, i know <laughs> that's, that's, that's his drink, phone i was drinking last night like so <laughs> <laughs> nick anthony one at outlook.com <laughs> nick anthony one at outlook.com all right uh, what about you Ryan? uh yeah just uh, remax eclipse.com you can uh, get on there and check out our agents and our, our offices and um modelmortgagedirect.com, uh, statestitleagency.com. EclipseRealtors.com. Eclipse Go to their Facebook page. <laughs> Facebook. It really, yeah. No, so truthfully, just social media. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, the Facebook. best way to contact us. We you know, we pimp ourselves out every day. Yeah, you you, if you're I mean, watching you this to. on Facebook, they're tagged in. Yeah, they're tagged. Yeah. In the yeah. video. So they got their Facebook page. Great videos. Exactly. A lot of coat buttoning. Um, and, and contrary to popular belief. Hey, hey, listen. Give us shit about I only did it. all states. I only did it once. Our entire video. Every video. The first video we ever made, it was awful. 
couple. We did like five times in the same well, day. We had to. We never done it. But the last one, I, I, it was, I was, it was the culprit. Only once. It was only once. That so. was good. Yeah. <laughs> we, we figured it out. We figured it out. Um, to contrary to popular belief, these guys are absolutely awesome. Uh, they're <laughs> they're you. great guys. <laughs> and we thank you so much for being on the show, yeah, guys. Thanks. We appreciate it. Thank you for having um, us. Everybody that's listening, find us on Podcast Detroit, uh, all that stuff. Please subscribe. Like, subscribe. Follow like, us. Share. Share. We got some comment. good episodes. Look at our past episodes. Probably better than this one. Um, oh my God. <laughs> <it's> guaranteed. <laughs> Jessica, <laughs> thank you so much for being here today. My pleasure. You're the best. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, everyone. Have a great right, day. Thanks. Bye-bye. Play the outro. Play it. Plug Real Estate, <laughs> the nation's top real estate podcast. Don't forget to follow us at irepodcast.com and everywhere where podcasts are available. Was the number? That threw me. Wow, you were like <laughs> race car driver. You're like, you can't do politics. Why I know you. <laughs> three one three. I wonder if it was someone we know. The fact that you said lobbyist makes me think we don't agree with politics. Nine, nine, <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> no one I know. Say, let me put it in my phone. What was he at? What was the number? Three one three eight four eight nine nine eight eight. No, nobody I know. Probably his homeless friend. Right. Hey, do you guys? We should have put him on. Yes. That would oh, be great. Okay. So many followers because he said left. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hi, did you know your warranty on your car has run out? 313. 848. So you know it's live. It's gonna, they can go to our website at Omega.